For those of you out there that are big players of the Nintendo Switch, you likely have tried to play a multiplayer game with friends by taking off the Joy-Cons from the left and right and using them as individual controllers. Now, if you remember my review a little while ago, I mentioned that while it was a cool feature, I just didn't like the way the controllers felt because they were kind of empty, really because they're just small and thin. But the folks at KMD sent us in their new controller grips, which essentially make the controller in each Joy-Con feel like an actual full-size controller, which I personally think is a big improvement, but it's a little bit more than just a plastic case because it has to do a couple modifications to make things work. Let's take a closer look. The first thing you're going to notice when looking at these grips is that they're both pretty light. They're not very heavy, and I think that's an okay thing for a couple gamers out there that aren't looking to add extra weight to their Joy-Con experience. Another thing you'll notice is that they are made completely of plastic, and, well, you'd think that maybe because they're made of plastic, they wouldn't have a really good feel to them, but they actually feel very sturdy and very solid, which is kind of important, especially if you're having a controller that you're going to be putting a lot of force into with your hands. Another thing that I kind of liked is that no matter which Joy-Con you use, on which grip you have, they're going to fit no matter what. You don't need a specific left Joy-Con grip for the left one or a right Joy-Con grip for the other one. They both fit no matter what. So just in case you lose one of these or you just happen to find one and you just want to use one at random, no matter which Joy-Con you use, it's going to fit into this. And also, because it is a grip and you are covering up some of the buttons, they do give you two left and right buttons on the top here to basically fill in for the shoulder buttons that you'd have naturally on the left and right Joy-Cons. But we'll be talking about those a little bit more later Realistically though, all you're looking at here is a grip for the controller, but it does do the function of being a grip pretty well. The way that the Joy-Con goes into the grip is pretty simple. You just line it up and kind of just push it in as best as you can. You shouldn't hear any loud clicks or loud pops or anything like that because there's actually nothing in the grip that's actually gripping the controller all that much. Initially, I was a little worried about these controller grips because I thought that the Joy-Con would be held in there very loosely, but because it's in there very solidly, it actually feels like it's one solidly built controller, which is actually kind of nice. So when you're really getting into the game that you're playing, you're not gonna feel anything shift around or move it's gonna feel completely cohesive. But with that being said, those little buttons at the top, well, those are the worst part about this. Now, right off the top of the bat, when you go to touch them, you're gonna feel some movement, but that movement isn't actually registering a click because all it really is is a tiny little dot of plastic that kind of just comes in and touches the Joy-Con naturally where the two left and right buttons are on the top. So you actually don't get any response or any click like that as soon as it's pushed in. So sometimes you're not really sure that they're working all that well. Now, unfortunately for most of the games I tried, it did affect me a lot because if they ever did need to use those two pieces at the top, it just didn't have the right feel. Initially, when you buy the Nintendo Switch, there's a little plastic piece that they include on the top that allows you to slide it into place on the Joy-Con so you can find that the feel of the top left and right buttons are just a little bit better. But with this, it didn't really compete with that. These feel a lot looser, they don't feel as responsive, and because of that, it can impact the way that you play certain games. Now, if you are playing a game that doesn't make use of the top and left right buttons, well, you're gonna be fine. But for me, even with a game like Tetris, where you do have to use those buttons once in a while, it did affect me to a point where it really wasn't that fun. So that's a big problem with something like this because, well, it's just a very awkward way for the buttons to kind of interface with the Joy-Con itself. Otherwise, though, if you're not using those buttons in any way, you should find that these controllers will work very well for you. What you're looking at here is a pretty basic product. There's not really a large expense to this. It's not revolutionary. It's not groundbreaking. It's just adding a little bit of volume and extra weight to the controller. That just makes it feel a little bit more substantial. And if it wasn't for those two left and right shoulder buttons, I feel that this thing would be even better. But unfortunately, I can't recommend it to a lot of people simply because I just don't feel it works as well as it could have. But for a few of you out there that don't really need the left and right shoulder buttons to be very responsive, this might be the best way for you to actually get a little bit more of a better feel out of your Joy-Cons.